drop 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 these everybody 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 Oh, he wants to go off road That chat when you got the lamp. No, he was right on my ass, man. Who wrote this? I did. Ask him if he got the letter. Did you get the letter? What letter? Make me quick. Make me quick. What's up, man? Oh, to catch a fade, huh? Everybody, welcome back to the Real Boys. Our delayed Friday night episode appearing on Saturday now, or whenever you decide to listen to this on your podcasting app. Uh, Real Boys is a show where we got a bunch of funny people together and we talk about our favorite movies and on Fridays, other movies. Uh, my name is Dylan. <laughs> I'm here today with Michael or New Raisin. Michael, how you doing? I am super duper. I've watched this movie twice this week. <laughs> oh, good. And of uh, Chris Harvey. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can. Okay, yeah, there we go. How yeah. you doing, Chris? Oh, I'm good. Yeah, cool. Chris yeah. Harvey, I'm looking. I, I, this is my favorite movie of all time. I'm, I was gonna say I, I watched <laughs> it seven times this week alone. You you put in the group message after that first time you watched it. You were like, I don't know how. What was it? You didn't know I, how you had gone so long without knowing about but, this, without seeing it. Yes, greatest yeah. movie. I, I mean, cin- cinematic masterpiece. Yeah. Right on. So uh, with that intro, the movie we are talking about today is Rubber. Uh, It is a 2010 English language French indie film from uh, a guy. Yeah. (laughs) You click his name on Wikipedia and his page is actually not his name. So he's got like, he goes by a stage name, uh, Mm -hmm. Mr. Oizo or Quentin Depieux. Um, It's a movie about a, um... well, Mike, Michael, you give the, you give the summary about what the movie's about. Oh boy. Um, I don't know that you can summarize this movie. If you were to reduce it and be reductive about this movie, you would say it's about a tire that comes to life and kills things with telekinetic powers. Psychokinetic. Psychokinetic powers. But that would be doing what this movie is a huge disservice. Um, Because the... That's not what it's about. <laughs> the tire part is not what this movie is. This movie is my favorite sort of Lynchian movie where they take some weird idea that they had, but they're not trying to make a David Lynch movie. This doesn't look nor does it feel like a David Lynch movie, but it's got all of the sort of trappings of a David Lynch movie. Um, they, they, I don't know. Some maniac came up with an idea um, where they were going to make a movie about a movie being made that is only being witnessed by a certain group of people through binoculars. And then when the movie is over, they're going to kill all of these people. And then the movie's over. Um, I I'm pretty sure that they came up with that concept first. And then it didn't really matter. Like the, the tire part didn't really matter to, what was going on 
Like they just, I, I think it feels like they came up with the conceit of the movie first where the people are watching the movie and then one of them doesn't take the poison. So they have to continue with the movie when they're not prepared to do so. And then what, like what the movie that they were watching was about was secondary. That part doesn't matter nearly as much. That's what it feels like, at least. Yeah, this movie can be described as, uh, Chris put it eloquently in the group chat, a rubber tire falls in love and kills people. <laughs> um, I, now, I, I, thought, I thought you guys said the movie Flubber <laughs> oh. with Robin Williams. Did you watch Flubber instead? <laughs> No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Some similarities. Did you watch? Actually. Have you ever watched Flubber? Yeah, yeah, it was one of my favorite movies growing up. Or Robin Williams in that in one of those big Disney plastic VHS cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah, part yeah. about that movie was when Tinkerbell fell in love with Peter Pan. Wait. <laughs> No, I, I, think, I think you're movie. thinking of the part where Tinkerbell falls into the flubber and then gets encased and turns into like a bouncy ball that some kid buys um, at the grocery store in one of those 50 cent machines. And yeah. then he loses it on the highway because he throws it out the window while his parents are driving him home. Got really existential, just like the <laughs> rubber. Um, <laughs> so, of course, Michael alluded to the plot, but pretty much what it boils down to, you start with some guys in the desert. And a car approaches and runs over a bunch of chairs. This is and... this is this is going to tell people a lot about me. But I think this is my favorite opening scene in a movie because it is so so ridiculous. Like when I was watching this for the first time, this is like. I watched it twice this week, which is probably my ninth and 10th time watching this movie. <laughs> but the first time I watched it, this old ass car is just driving up this desert road where there's a bunch of chairs set up. And he hits every one of the chairs on the way up, gets out and starts addressing sort of you personally Viewer. yeah but he's really addressing the audience that's there to watch this movie happen but that's also you and from the second that i saw that car drive up and hit that first chair i was like are they gonna hit each and every one and they did they go way out of their way to hit each one of these chairs and it i uh, I'm blown away by people who make things. They have an idea and they go, I'm just going to make this. And that's it, it. I love that. And I tried to take that into everything that I make. You know, you have the thing and you say, I don't think many people are going to like this, but the people who like this are going to like it so much. And I, I've used that for everything that I've ever done done i mean john carpenter did it again david lynch did it um there's a lot of directors movies artists uh music artists that do the same thing and they're always my favorite no matter how weird or dumb or i'm not gonna say crappy because this movie is not crappy it's just very weird it's well acted it's well directed it's kind of ugly but but it's also supposed to be that way. Um, but yeah, I, I just love creators who do things like this. Like, like here, I have this weird idea. You're going to get exactly the weird idea that I had. And you're either going to like it or you don't. And I don't care either way. So uh, Chris, right? now, that, now that we've covered the first 15 seconds of the movie, what were you thinking this far in? <laughs> Oh, um, I, I was very surprised by by um, uh, the opening scene just because I didn't know what to expect from the trailer. didn't didn't really give you much uh, at all, um, and so I didn't have high hopes. All right, yeah, no, I get it. Um, I, re so I really enjoyed the part right after that, though. Go ahead and explain. <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, so 
the sheriff gets out and addresses the audience with a speech about no reason. And uh, we find out there's an audience in the desert with binoculars watching mm -hmm. a movie. Right. And then we see Robert the Tire, who's not named in the script. It's just kind of, or not named in the movie. Robert stands upright, practices his uh, psychokinetic powers by blowing up a whole bunch of desert animals and inanimate objects. And then he sees a woman in a truck and falls in love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I didn't I didn't see the falling in love so much this time. Uh it it seemed to me okay you and this is What's that? How many times did you watch it? Uh, this week twice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well you've seen it 10 times after your 11th time watching that's when you really see the love part. Um, <laughs> No, um, see, um, I, I, I was seeing the love part until this time, oh, because when I was watching it this time, it seems like she's sort of the one who keeps getting away. Mm. And we're talking about Sheila. She, yes. No, you're thinking of Army of Darkness. Uh, the, I think Sheila in this, too. They just never call her by name. The woman, the woman who plays uh, uh, Miss Honey in uh, Matilda. She plays <laughs> Sheila in Army of Darkness. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Right. We should do Matilda too. That movie's great. Um, but Darkness, anyway, of course, a prequel great? to Army of the Dead. Matilda is great. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't I want you laughing. Almost as, it's almost as good as Rubber. Almost. You're correct. You're correct on that. I also don't want to hear you laughing at my movie choices because I did watch um, I like Instant Matilda. Family this weekend. So, <laughs> Instant Family is amazing. And Matilda is one of my favorite movies growing up, too. Of course, you can ch tune in for uh, Instant Family this Monday, which is Chris Harvey's number one movie. Yes. We're in the last stretch. Uh, yeah. yeah. So then after Robert uh, follows the woman to the hotel... He kills a maid. We get a bunch. We get a whole bunch of murders. Uh, a whole oh. bunch of people die, <laughs> and then um, the audience in the movie uh, is fed a single cooked turkey. They rip it apart like animals, and then they all die from uh, poisoning, except for one guy in a wheelchair who's still watching the movie. The <laughs> it is so weird going through this just on, on an event based. It's so weird because description. Yeah. Um, it it but is. It's, it's sort of two movies happening. Mm -hmm. um, it's the movie yeah. that they're watching, and then almost three. It's we get to that Chris, later, yeah. Chris Harvey. It's almost three. <laughs> 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 you are no, not actually. wrong about this. <laughs> you have accidentally stumbled onto a true <laughs> fact about this movie. <laughs> I don't know. Watch it one day a week. I think that'll just kind of yeah, yeah. You figure it out really fast. Yeah, but uh, the sheriff gives his uh, police investigators a speech about how none of this is real. This is all a movie, and the movie's over because nobody's watching it. Go ahead and shoot me. Get shot a few times, and he's totally fine. And then he gets a call that not all the audience members are dead, and the movie's still going on. Which, if I would have changed one thing about this movie. One thing I would have changed about this movie is as soon as he got that call and that guy told him that there was still somebody watching, he would have instantly dropped dead. Yeah. <laughs> Little missed opportunity on that. Yeah. And then uh, Robert comes across a bunch of people burning tires because the town has gone on a tire hunt. Uh, they yeah, use they dynamite. do figure out that it's yep. the tire that's doing it. They use dynamite to... Uh, on a mannequin with a wig to kind of lure him in because he thinks it's a woman. Uh, the dynamite doesn't work. <laughs> so the sheriff in an effort just to end the movie walks into the house, with the shotgun blows the tire up and is just like, all right, there we did it. It's over. Uh, not long after Robert is reincarnated as a tricycle kills him, kills the man in a wheelchair, uh, recruits and resurrects an army of other psychic tires and goes down the road to Hollywood. And that's the end of the movie. That's the end of the movie. That's it. This it's so, it's I think so it has the same plot as um as a uh, child's play, in my opinion. Yeah, all right. You're not uh, far off, kind of. The yes, the the Robert the the tire part of the movie 
except he, he doesn't get a human soul like Chucky does. It like it doesn't come from a uh, from a human. He just sort of picks himself up. Why did Dylan's screen turn into Zach? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> I had to do something. Um, okay. <laughs> it's just weird. I would think that there would be a, uh, like a cartoon of you. It's tied to the account and we only okay. have one picture up there. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, that's the basic storyline of rubber. Uh, but it doesn't really do any, doesn't do a service to it. Described it's, in that way. It is going to be very hard to do this movie. Just, this by talking about it because i agree the absolute weirdness of this movie is like we talked about it when we did uh the greasy strangler um the fact that a movie like this is so important to artists <laughs> uh because this movie is definitely polarizing. Like I can definitely see people not liking this movie, but for people who have creative inclinations and need people out there doing stuff like this, the stuff like this is so important, especially now where everything is a big, dumb two hour action movie, you know, slug fest where nothing really happens and nobody really does anything. And, you know, we're seeing the same thing three times a year from, Oh, let's just say Marvel studios. Um, it's important for people. And there, these are going to be smaller movies because there's not as many people who are into this sort of thing as people who are into Marvel movies. And I totally get that, but I think it's more important to have things like this for the people who it's for than it is to have three Marvel movies a year for people who like big, dumb explosions. Now, Chris, you've watched this enough that you kind of have this down pat. And I know you're a big fan of like, just, big blockbuster stuff. If you had to make this more accessible to a general blockbuster, like Disney Marvel audience, what's one change you would make to this movie? I mean, you can't really change something. This, this, this is just different. You know, if you put a change, it just takes away the whole concept. So I wouldn't even mess with it. You can say it's perfect, Chris. Go ahead. You can say, say it's perfect. Say it. yeah, it's, it's a perfect it's, movie. It's definitely a per it's almost as perfect as Instant Family, which we'll go into <laughs> later next week. Um, <laughs> let me let me change. Let me let me ask a similar question then. In the wide scale American remake of this movie, who do you think should voice the tire? Um, I mean Channing Tatum's always a good. Uh, a good go-to, um, and but they only had a budget of eight hundred thousand for this movie. Um, I just wish it would have hit a higher, um, you know, box office. It hit like six hundred eighty thousand worldwide, which isn't isn't enough for them to remake it or to make it uh, something better. But I mean, I think that maybe if we would have just got the correct marketing behind it in the in, in maybe a bigger name, you know, like a Channing Tatum, that would have really pushed this through the envelope to where people would have got it. It could have used one big name that probably would have gotten them, you know, somebody, you know, the sheriff could have been played by, let's Anyone say, a, let's say a Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. He could, have, he could have stood there looking confused the entire movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Why are the trees emitting toxins, bro? No reason. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, um, Rubber is one of those weird movies where it's just kind of like they had a vision and they, like, went for it. Um, and it looks, you know, the effects for the tire look pretty good. I mean, that's the, kind of... the yeah. That was the one thing, because usually in movies like this, like, very low-budget movies... I'm, su I'm surprised they had a, the budget that big without, like, a name or without something attached to it, because... The concept itself, pitching it, I don't know how they got 800000 I don't know how they got any money to make this movie because you can't... 
pitch this movie. Yeah. The the <laughs> the woman that does play uh like the the one that he's that the tire is following around. Yeah. I did look her up her IMDb. She's in a ton of French movies. She is mm. like some sort of star in France. So, you know, that's that's something as the, far as star power goes. The only person I recognize in this is uh Wings Hauser. Um he's the guy in the wheelchair. Mm-hmm. And oh. mostly he's mostly in like old cheap like detective movies, Vice Squad, like a whole bunch of B movies, stuff like that. I think he is responsible for the Oh God, Oh Man line reading. <laughs> he was in the movie uh, Tough Guys Don't Dance, which is where that's from. Um, oh, that was Ryan O'Neill. I was incorrect. Oh, but yeah, Wingshauser is kind of like I, he, he did a whole lot of monster movies, so it was kind of neat to see him in here. Yeah, I've definitely seen him in a bunch of stuff. I couldn't have picked him out. I couldn't have been like, oh, yeah, that's Wings Hauser. But, you know, he is one of those people who I'm like, I've seen that guy around. <laughs> who is that? I only knew it because of the, I saw his name in the credits and I had to go okay. back and like look up who he was. But, OK, yeah, that's the biggest name you got. And when a cult monster movie star is like your big get. Eight hundred thousand is pretty impressive yeah it's it mm. is kind of a lot but the like usually on these movies when they're exploding heads um you can usually see it turn into a mannequin head or a paper mache head um but in this it looked really good up until they exploded like where do you think most of the budget went i think the tire <laughs> I think I think Robert I got at least four hundred grand of that. Yeah, I don't think you needed to pay too much to roll a tire down the street and then blow an air compressor into it so that it <laughs> looks like it's wobbling. Mm -hmm. um, Apparently, a lot of the tire was done with practical effects, like remote yeah. control stuff, and um, yeah. the headshots were CGI for a lot of it. Really? Yeah, I would never have guessed. I wouldn't have guessed that either because. Those were some good head explosions. Oh, once the money went, once they yeah. showed the bodies laying on the floor, uh, and it looks like somebody just sprayed ketchup all over them, <laughs> it wasn't quite as impressive. But those head explosions, and there's a bunch of them like the rabbit explodes, um, the yeah. mouse explodes, Bird. there's like three close up head explosions. The guy in the truck, I was like. I rewound oh. it and I was looking at it and I was waiting for it to turn into a mannequin head and it, it just didn't. And I'm like, wow, great job on these head explosions. It, it looked like they use squibs when the sheriff gets shot. Like that's not, yeah. it doesn't look like CGI blood spatter, which I always no. appreciate. Yeah. The, the sheriff getting shot is definitely, um, you know, it, it, I'm sure it took a lot when the tire does go into the pool and drowns. Um, that was some very good drowning acting by the tire. Also, <laughs> when the kid has more. the, when, when the kid's dad sends him to go get the pizza and then he is riding around with an obvious empty box, but then he stops and the pizza's in there and he puts the chunks of exploded rabbit onto the pizza. <laughs> and he's like, here's your double toppings. You son of a bitch really looked like very real gross exploded roadkill animal. And I was very grossed out another missed opportunity for the movie though. They never show that dad eating that pizza with the, with the roadkill rabbit blown up chunks in it. Mm. Okay. Um, let's talk real quick. Yeah. Let's I, talk. I, I didn't, I didn't watch this movie. Right. <laughs> And what? Listen, oh, what? I was fooled. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> listen to you talk about this movie. I would never watch this movie. We should do this every episode where yeah. one person doesn't watch the movie and we explain it. This movie sounds awful. That's a way better idea for season two than anything oh, yeah. else. Gosh, I think this, seen sucks. this is great. I would never watch this. Sounds I watched the trailer in the beginning. That's why I muted myself. And I was like, I don't know what this movie's about. And then listen to you, whatever you just explained about pizza, and you son of a bitch. This sounds awful. <laughs> Exploding birds and rabbits and a tie. This sound movie looks uh, horrible. 
Um, I'm so happy so I did not waste an hour and a half watching you. It. This knowing this movie and knowing your taste in in saccharine, cheesy, yeah, overly dramatic, <laughs> hyper emotional, hyper emotional oh. movies, I wouldn't have suggested this to you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the thank only you. reason that I did want. I did want everybody in this panel to, because I wanted to hear their honest opinions about it. Because, like I said before, I absolutely love this movie. And that. I'm pretty sure we can say anything this episode. No one's watching this episode <laughs> because this movie sounds awful. We got people in here. We went it's 23 insane. minutes and I was super bored. I was like, man, I should just act like my internet cut off <laughs> or I should do something like, oh man, fake a phone call because this movie sucks. I didn't even watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have suggested this to you. Uh, it's way too smart for you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no. no, it's it's weird. And I understand that a lot of people do enjoy, you know, more you know, I'm going to call the, I'm going to say regular movies. Like there's a lot of regular movies out there. You guys and, do enjoy movies that like, that are like things that are thoughts that someone pitches. And usually people just like, no, that sounds dumb. Then it leaves yeah. it alone. But you guys like the fact that someone pitches, people like, fuck it, let's do it. Yep. That's yeah. what I like. You enjoy Absolutely. The took something that shouldn't be a movie and made it a movie anyway for the art of it. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys enjoy that. So I'm glad that there's movies out there for, for you guys um, that have no feeling. And it's just cool explosions that aren't mannequin heads. I'm glad that you there's, guys appreciate things like that. There's yeah, a, again, that's me. <laughs> again, this movie is also not cool explosions. <laughs> the is, explosions it has are pretty cool. The explosions it has explosion. are cool. Um, but it's it's just such a weird concept, and like you have me at weird concept, and it's it has yeah. nothing to do with. I know that when we started, Chris Harvey thought that I like weird stuff just so that I could set myself apart from everyone else, <laughs> and it's true. I do love weird stuff. Like I'll take a bad weird thing over a good like thing that i've seen a hundred times like i'll take a weird rubber over a great marvel movie or a great romantic comedy like but that's just because i'm weird <laughs> All right, okay so i didn't watch this movie is this have um in my guess, it w doesn't have high character builds. So, like, I'm assuming that there's no character that you just fall in love with in this. No. No. Okay. no. So, uh, characters are not named for the most part. Okay. Um, in the, They're never addressed. They don't address each other by name. You don't really learn their names in the movie. It's like the sheriff, the girl, the guy in the wheelchair. Are you, yeah. Do you consider yourself introverts? In that uh. I recharge when i am have alone time yes yeah i enjoy going out and doing things but i have a lot of the movies that i've like feel like you guys have liked have characters that are more surface level that are like you know like like the um that are, don't have these huge weird backstories that are not weird but like these backstories that are kind of normal that would be social interaction of of deep emotional bullshit um, that that seems like you guys don't like anything like that, where it's like something that you're supposed to connect with the character. Because I think you guys actually hate human beings. You should <laughs> like, uh, hey, you this should, fucking oh, fire wait. is amazing, but Will Smith losing his daughter is bullshit. Just wait until, <laughs> I mean, wait until my number one movie. It is entirely a character study. So yeah, I'm it, okay. I, I like either either deep character. Like if you're gonna have character building, I want to get that character built up. Um, you can't have 60 characters running around in a movie and try to build up all of them. Or I want to be plopped into the middle of a situation and whatever that situation is playing out, I don't, uh, sometimes I don't necessarily need the backstory for anybody. If, if we're just watching a period of time, 
I don't want to know what happened before that period of time. And I don't need to know what happened after that period of time. And that's one of these movies. We are plunked into a situation and we're not told why this situation is happening. And then the movie plays out and then we get to the end of the movie. And even though there is, you know, there's definitely something that happens after this is over. You don't know what that is. I don't need like a, like a breakfast club. This is what happened to each of these characters thing at the end. Let me figure it out. Let me figure out why we're in this situation. And let me figure out what happens after this situation. It's so funny because it's something like this that you, you like, you don't care, but then something like quiet place. You're like, why are the aliens here? Why did they come? Why did they kill everyone? What's up with the nail? And so it's funny to see like, when it's it, it, when it's something that isn't mainstream, you guys kind of give it a little bit more leeway, I think. When it's something that's kind of more artsy and it's not meant to be a big money maker, you guys kind of enjoy it more, I think. And you kind of let yourself actually watch the movie for it instead of, oh man, fucking John, here goes John Karnarski with all these big people, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I think one of the main differences between this and A Quiet Place is how seriously they take themselves. Okay. Quiet Place takes itself yeah. very seriously. So it's yeah. very easy to be like, I'm supposed to take this seriously too, but this doesn't yeah, make yeah. sense. Whereas okay. Rubber starts off with this yeah. real nonsense scene where the one of the characters comes up and talks directly to the camera. Nothing matters. Nothing happens for a reason. This is a movie. And then you watch this movie and nothing matters and nothing happens for a reason. And I think there is a difference in my view and experience when I am presented with that at the start of the movie, as opposed to quiet place where it is like, this is a serious family drama set against the apocalypse of aliens. I can take that premise, but then I also need, I also need that premise to take itself. Like I'm glad you logical conclusion. That was a very good (laughs) argument. I I will accept your answer. Michael, you don't have to respond to the answer because we've already settled it. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I would have said uh, approximately the same thing, probably not as eloquently as, yeah, as Dylan did, but I would have stumbled would have over the words, same. Like, eloquently, so yeah, I, I, I would have I would have stumbled on the same sort of uh, end goal. Yeah. You know, you it's just, yeah. Yeah. yeah the, this movie doesn't. Yeah, this movie doesn't take itself seriously. It's not a comedy, but it's not. It's, it's not not a comedy. It's not not a comedy, and it it doesn't. Oh, real quick, this has nothing to do with this episode. Yeah, I watched a a, a, a documentary thing about uh, making the movies or whatever that we love. Um, and Forrest Gump was written as a comedy. Just uh, backtrack. Okay, go ahead. Noted. Noted. Just so we know. Noted. That makes it worse because it wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking two reels off of whatever I said at Forrest Gump. Take two reels off of it because it's written as a comedy. Not can't, not can't retroactively change your rating <laughs> outside of a retrospective episode. Forrest Gump is more of a comedy than rubber. That's they're different types of comedies. I'm I I'm trying so hard to but i can't like i can't explain why i like stuff like this it's just something that i i do i really appreciate because i was always you know elementary school all the way through school all the way through college all the way through everything you've never had friends i was the weird kid who had (laughs) a couple (laughs) friends and did the weird stuff i was the weird kid who did the weird stuff that nobody wanted to talk to because i was too busy you know choice underneath the swings building you know monsters out of rocks and dirt and you know doing weird stuff like that i didn't want to play sports i didn't want to do any of that stuff i wanted to make stuff and not i didn't want to make stuff for other people i was making stuff for myself Mm -hmm. because it's what i wanted to see and experience and that's what movies like this remind me of. There are games, uh, there are video games that I play that are, they're bad. Like they're not good games, but they have a vision and, you know, uh, 
I appreciate that. I appreciate people who have a vision and make what they're thinking of making and damn not, everybody else. Like not necessarily for anyone, but just it, to make it. Yeah, to but make thoughts, right. but that's important for people like me and like those people who do that stuff because now we realize that we're not the only ones who were like that. Like I can have a weird idea. Like I used to do a comic book that was about the people who made the comic book, making the comic book in this weird um, studio that made everybody go crazy. Hmm. And nobody is do. Nobody was doing stuff like that. You know, Jack Billings that we do now is this weird, like comedy improv thing about, you know, this weird neighborhood where stupid stuff happens. And we don't have huge, like my comic book didn't sell a ton, but the people who liked it were like obsessed with it. Like when the new one came out, they couldn't wait to get the new one our download numbers for Jack Billings aren't huge, but the people that listen to it every week, like immediately our numbers are there right away because people are looking for that. And that's who I'm making stuff for. I want people to know that you're not the only one who is like this and movies like rubber and like the greasy strangler, even though I did hate that while I was watching it. Um, but that kind of stuff is important for people to know that even though they are weird and they're probably outcasts in their, you know, towns or whatever, that they're definitely not the only ones who are like that because there's, there's a lot of us and thank you internet for letting people know that there are other people like that. But that's, that's what we want. We want art for art's sake and if it's a dumb movie about a tire that explodes people's heads um, with their psychokinetic powers, nah, that, that, then that's what it is. If it's a weird Twin Peaks rip, rip off game um, where, where a detective, you know, has to find a guy who's murdering women and then that guy turns into a huge monster like in deadly premonition um then then that's what we get and uh thank you for letting me go off on my rant about the well, longest emmy speech i've ever heard <laughs> i think so i think pe- nobody I think played me off just like... <laughs> you should have played me off you should have stuff like that ready because you know that when i go off i'm just gonna keep going until what, somebody stops like this <laughs> oh, this is my perfect time to, to, to bail out. Do you want me to play you off, Chris? Do you want to disappear during technical <laughs> difficulties? I mean, since I don't have much more to say about the movie, I got your guys' opinions, and I didn't get to watch it, so I can't give a reel. I mean, I'd give a reel like I gave uh, Clockwork Orange a reel. Um, uh, I watched more of that movie than I watched for this movie, so there's that. Um, right. <laughs> well, this this movie doesn't have any of that that stuff that you yeah yeah and i'm not gonna say you i'm gonna say everyone uh was right about not wanting to watch including myself um it doesn't have any of that stuff Mm -hmm. so no no i mean i would have watched this i just did it i just forget to watch movies most of the time yeah and Um, you're perfectly okay my wife who i would say is in between a me and a chris harvey as far as movie tastes go, um, she hates this movie. Um, so I totally get people not liking the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So does she uh, like but, Mystic Family? Uh, she didn't watch it, but I did. I actually suggested it to her because um, we'll talk about it on Monday. Yeah, yeah, but I, I Monday. Didn't, I'll be here Monday. It was your second best movie that you picked by like a big margin. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's <laughs> a good, and what was the first? Lion King? Lion King, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Plus, Black I mean, King. Instant Family has Tignataro, so it already Whoa. gets like an extra three. Tignataro, the, the uh, she's one of the, the 
she's a stand-up comedian who is my absolute favorite stand-up of all time. Uh, but she's the the skinny, tall girl lady who works at the uh, adoption agency. Oh, yeah, really? she's a wonderful stand-up. Um, I didn't know that. I have to look I, her up. I absolutely love her. Yeah, Jake Mataro's oh. good. Yeah, she's That's great. a sneak peek for Monday's episode. You should come see it when I'm back, and I'll be there. This Chris will be, be Chris will be here the entire charge. time as long as he sets his alarm um, and yeah. gets up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, my life is hard. Okay? Yeah. No, but we do. I mean, we love having you on here, Chris. Yeah. Um, thanks for having me. Even though I didn't watch it, thanks for letting me join. Yeah, of course. I, I mean, I would rather have you here talking to us than not. Yeah, I'm pretty awesome. Yeah, you're pretty awesome. Don't tell anybody, like, since nobody's watching this, since we picked a weird independent movie, um, <laughs> I, I'm not going to, I will never say it in one of our, like, main episodes, but, right. like, I, I really do enjoy you, Chris, as a person. Yeah. And even if we don't have the same um, taste movie in movies, taste. Um, I, I'll I'll forgive it because I, I get it. <laughs> <It's unfair. laughs> At least I, I have a very consistent movie uh, likings. Yeah. They're very uh, kind of the same tone. It, it, they were definitely all the same tones. And like I said um, during the Lion King, not bro at all. And I, I do I, you know, appreciate I was, that. I was <laughs> thinking about um, a movie that because you guys are talking about Mark Wahlberg. I wish I would. And it is usually in my top five, but I moved it out for a movie. I don't know what movie is Four Brothers with Mark Wahlberg and Tyrese and Gibson. You know, have you seen I think that? I've seen that movie a long time ago. No. I wish I would have brought that one because it was more of a. Um, I think you guys would have liked that. So maybe that would be for season two. I remember okay. it was pretty good. Well, we're know. definitely not. Uh, I, I have a couple of ideas for actors um, that we want to do retrospectives on. Ooh. Mark Wahlberg probably not a good idea. What's the retrospective? What's that mean? Like. We'll sort of going all over of all of a, a certain actor or actress's movies mm. and sort of maybe rank, rank them or something. That'd be good. Why didn't we, we could do that. That's not, we could, but not just one episode you, you view like all their movies or like a majority or like a top five. Uh, movie. I would, I would say, you know, somebody that you probably have seen their movies. I wouldn't, I don't think there's any actor or actress that I would want to watch, you know, five or six of their movies in oh, a week. week. Oh, there's plenty. <laughs> Maybe there's, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell would probably be the only one that I would want to do that for. There's plenty of people. Will Smith. Yeah, I can think of a few. Bruce Willis. <laughs> Bruce watch, Willis movies are usually very good. Adam Sandler. I'd watch his movie, five movies in a week of Adam I Sandler. would rather die than watch five Adam Sandler movies in a week. <laughs> My <laughs> friend. <laughs> My friend just had a, a he's in a, a class for film and he had a debate about he said Adam Sandler does not have a good movie and he said they're all horrible and so I guess the whole class argued with him and it was him versus 30 people. <laughs> so, I don't agree I with would, his statement. I would say he has two and a half good movies. That's ooh, that's pushing it. <laughs> Eight Crazy Nights is his only good one. The Wedding Singer, I'll defend that one. The Wedding Singer, I'll defend, and The Water Boy, I'll defend. <laughs> Do we count Uncut Gems as an Adam Sandler movie? Yeah, that's a good movie. I heard it. I heard it's good. I I try to watch it one time, but <laughs> yeah. it's not my style of movie. That's fine. I, I thought uh, I thought Hubie's Halloween was amazing. <laughs> Did you see Impossible uh, Six or whatever? Ridiculous Six? No, I didn't watch that. Is that Adam Sandler movie? Is oh yeah. Uh huh. I didn't watch that. Oh, it's awful. Well, if you if you love racism, go ahead and watch the ridiculous six. Oh, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch Robert Downey Jr. five five movies of him. Hmm. Yeah. I would have to think of five non Marvel Iron Man, <laughs> Iron Man Two, Iron Man Three, <laughs> Iron Man 3 right there. <laughs> I would. Yeah. Infinity War and Endgame. There you go. You got. Five yeah. Left. No, I, I, I'm very done. representative of his. Uh, yes. his, his well, well, thank well, you well. for making me hate Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> I don't blame him you for got, chasing a paycheck. Oh Tropic, no, no. Tropic Thunder. Oh, Tropic Thunder is. Tropic Thunder was good when I saw it the one time in the theater. I'm afraid to rewatch that. I, movie. I, I, I still like Tropic Thunder. I understand. To be honest, man, I just watched it. it. Recently, I just watched it for the first time like a month ago. It's really good, in my yeah. opinion. I Jack Black, like that. I, I really like Jack Black too. Yeah, you got five Jack Black movies. 
that that's that would be perfect. Yeah, Kevin the uh, Jumanji. You got Tenacious School of State. Rock. School of Rock is great. Uh, uh Pick Shout of, De- Pick of Destiny. Um, what's that movie called where he dates the fat girl? Shallow oh Hell. no. No, that movie sucks. <laughs> Not a fan. <laughs> uh, Nacho <laughs> Libre is good. <laughs> Nacho Libre is a lot. Nacho Libre is a lot. That is that's as much Jack Black as you're gonna get. I've never seen it. It's it's Jack Black at his Jack Blackiest. What's the one where he's a giant? Gulliver's, Gulliver's Travels. Gulliver's. Yeah, that's. I ne- yeah, I never saw that one. I don't think I've seen it all the way through. There's plenty of Jack Black movies. Yeah, and then yeah. you got to play, and then you play Tenacious D in the background as we do the episode. Big fan of Tenacious D. Well, Look, I know, yeah. I know a little <laughs> bit, guys. I know stuff. <laughs> I know I have knowledge. <laughs> no, the only time we would ever say that you don't is to make a joke at your expense on the show. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Mike. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Rubber. Yeah. I'm yeah. Hungry. Rubber. Wow. We have stopped talking about rubber 20 yeah, minutes. There's nothing ago. else to say. It's an awful movie. I'm leaving. <laughs> Bye, guys. Catch Bye. me on Monday. Bye, Chris. Bye, Chris. We'll see you Monday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he's gone. Rubber. He's not even backstage. What do we say? <laughs> Chris Harvey. Not- he's certainly articulate in his non opinions. Yeah. Chris Harvey has terrible opinions on movies, but. <laughs> also really good debater like yeah. he has he has made me think twice about my opinions on things that i have just watched the true very good debater the true heart of this podcast yeah unfortunately we're just shambling along every time he's not here yeah uh but so rubber um, yeah i've i've definitely said my piece about this movie um it, Based on what it represents alone, it's it's a perfect piece of art. As a movie, it looks good. The acting is decent. Um, the uses of color are really good because we are set in a desert. But then when they show the water like in the pool, it's very blue. When they show the blood, it's very red. Um, so the 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 splashes of color are, you know, really nice to look at. Um, it, the, the concept is really where this movie lives and dies. Like if you, if you can get behind the concept of how weird this movie is, <laughs> it's a movie about people watching a movie that's about a tire and then that it comes to life. And then <laughs> that meta meta universe kind of breaks apart. At yes. about the two thirds mark, and you're yeah. suddenly with a slightly more conventional horror ending. Yeah, very yeah. slightly more conventional. Very slightly more. I would, if somebody was to ask me what the genre of this movie is, I probably would say horror, but it wouldn't be with a lot of conviction. <laughs> I, it's it's surreal satirical horror comedy. Like it's it is. Definitely a satire of horror movies because yeah. of the meta meta even even past the point where it logically is done. Yeah. But and it could also it could also, you know, be representative that that small audience could be representative of the audience they were expecting for this movie and you know uh, of horror movies in general, like a small but very dedicated audience. Yeah. Who yeah, wanted to know what was going to happen. For I, I recommend this to people who are looking for something weird, like some something that is like horror bait, like a weird horror movie. I'd be like, check out Rubber, uh, and I would warn them like you got to have a level of buy in on the premise. Yeah. But I think once it gets started, if you watch it and you kind of grasp what's going on about the metal layer, you're like, okay, I can yeah. deal with this. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, the. It's a, I, don't, I mean, I don't know that I have much else to say about it. I enjoy the movie. I've seen it I, a few times now over the last few years. And the first time I saw it, I was uh, in an altered state of mind. And I <laughs> wasn't entirely sure what I thought about it. And then I rewatched it 
uh, once things had calmed down a little bit. And I was like, okay, I, I can, I appreciate the, the idea and the cleverness in this movie. And yeah. I rewatched it last week for this. And I was like, all right, this is fun. It's fun. Yeah. It's really fun because again, it doesn't take itself seriously, but it also isn't like nudging you in the elbow or nudging you in the ribs with their elbow every 10 minutes. Like, huh? Did you see what we do there? They just sort of do it. And if you're getting nudged, you're getting nudged by yourself <laughs> and you're, you're right about the buy-in. It's, it's all about the buy-in for this movie. And if you say this is a weird, and then it does, you know, that moment where the audience is supposed to all be dead, but the one guy didn't eat the Turkey. So where the movie is supposed to end and they, it's not like they have control over it. It's not like they can be like, all right, we're done. He's like, no, you're not done. You're going to show me the end of this movie. So they have to wing it after that. And it's, yeah, it's just such a cool way yeah. to do a movie. <laughs> yeah. And then having Robert come back as a tricycle and have his little army of, of car tires. It's, uh, it's so noncommittal too. Cause the wheelchair guy is just like, wait, it's not done yet. He just got yeah. reincarnated as a tricycle <laughs> and then it wheels out of the house. And it's just like, all right, we're doing this now. Uh, that, yeah. Uh, no reason. Yeah. No reason. Besides. Um, yeah. Uh, so since it doesn't look like uh, Justin Wallace is going to join us today, we're yeah. very close to the end. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, uh, I mean, I'm going to give you my final thoughts and I don't yeah. care if you're ready for them. No, go for um, it. <laughs> uh, besides again, this movie I'm going to give it a higher rating than it probably deserves just because I'm so passionate about the concept of this movie. Um, but it also as a movie, it moves like it moves. Well, sure. the acting is good. It's not quite 90 minutes. I think. Yeah. It, it looks nice. There's two things. The fact that that sheriff doesn't die when he finds out that the movie's not over bugs the shit out of me. And that, scene where they have the mannequin on the porch and there's a speaker and you know, the lady's talking into it. It goes on for so much longer than it needs to. And it's just, it, it, it feels like it feels like they are going, you know, that's the only point in the movie where they're like, eh, you get it. You see what we're doing here. This is really silly. And I'm like, all right, yeah, I do get that this movie is very silly. We're almost done with it. You don't have to tell me that now. <laughs> but those are the only two points in the movie where I where I wasn't like totally a hundred percent in. Um, so I'm giving this movie a nine. Oh, and wow. you can shove it up your butt if you don't like it. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Uh, you you know, you rate it whatever subjective number you want to rate. Yeah, it. it's this is. I've definitely now. Can I talk to the listeners for a second? Sure. Um, I don't care. Listeners, you know me. I'm I'm your neighbor, Michael. Um, these fuckers <laughs> keep talking shit that I don't like anything. But you know that I'm the one that usually gives out the best. Oh, thanks for God damn it, Nick Milotti. It's for no reason, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm upside down for no reason. I would have thought that you would have got that. Anyway, I'm the one who gives out mostly good scores. It's just when, you know, movies are boring or generic. So don't uh, like I'm asking you listeners to listen li to watch us live when we're on. And when these fuckers start telling me that I don't like anything, I want you to chime in. I want you to to get my back. I want you to be on my side. Be like, look, just because you guys, <laughs> just because you guys don't, you know, go on the show and don't listen to the ones that you're not on. That doesn't mean that Michael doesn't give out good scores for movies. He does it all the time. Nick Milotti, you owe me one. Um, 
So whenever anybody gets on my case, I want you to be in the comments about how I give good scores to things, how I like a lot of stuff. And that's that's all. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm <laughs> I'm giving this a <clears throat> probably an eight, and that's a subjective eight because I really enjoy this movie. I would put that with like a disclaimer that it's not for everybody. But that if you want something weird and something outside of what you normally might watch, it's definitely something you can put on and not lose a whole lot except for like 85 minutes. Uh, <laughs> and if I, Michael, if it's okay with you, I'm going to talk to the viewers real quick. Um, just when you guys tune in live and when people are talking, whether it's relevant or not, just put in, in the comments, write something about how handsome I am or how funny I am or if I, I'm a good writer or I play guitar really just something something nice uh while everybody else is talking that would be great um yeah so seven on rubber um or eight eight on rubber because that's my score i said eight yeah <laughs> uh, i was I trying to think i was like begging. is that the total score but i gave it no. higher than that so <laughs> totals totals eight and a half because there are only two of us giving ratings so it's eight and a half which is really high for rubber that's which is so it's me. so high <laughs> But hey, listen, <laughs> if two people weird ones are on right now, yeah, so. if people wanted to give it a lower score than that, they should have watched the movie and been on the show, bro. Yeah. Hey, bro, why are you not on the show? I don't know. If Mark Wahlberg voiced the tire. They'd be on this show. Oh, if you want to hear that Mark Wahlberg voice and watch me look confused um, the entire time, uh, tune down on Monday for because this is besides the happening this might be the most confused mark Wahlberg i've ever seen in him cool <laughs> he looks he's doing that confused mark Wahlberg face the entire time <laughs> strong pitch i i um, i i don't and also you're gonna hear me give out hey listeners you're gonna give you're gonna hear me give out yet another higher score than you think i'm going to <laughs> All right. <laughs> Before we give our own plugs, because we finished up the movie discussion, I'm going to just make sure everybody knows who else is on The Real Boys. Of course, you heard from Chris Harvey earlier. Wasn't Marky Mark in the sequel to Rubber? I think it was called I Heart Huckabees. I haven't seen I Heart Huckabees. Was Mark Wahlberg in I Heart Huckabees? I think he's in it. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, Chris Harvey of the Chris and Chris show. He's a touring uh, comedian. You can find him on a whole bunch of stuff. He's very funny. Got DL Smoked from Oops Caught Me Smoking. He and Jerry and Blaze of the Cloud Chronicles podcast have joined together and are doing Bet That, which Bet is that. a sports podcast. One more time. Bet That. There it is. Uh, we've got, of course, Justin Wallace, who said he was going to be here tonight. Um, you know, whatever. He was probably too busy getting up to his anime shenanigans, which is also the name of the show he puts out. Yeah, his Amagam shenanigans. Uh, mannequin shenanigans? Yeah. Yeah, where, you, where we watch one minute of we uh every every hour long episode is about God one minute it. of mannequins. God <laughs> damn it. Now I want to do a show called Mannequin Shenanigans. We're talking about the is it Tom Hanks who's in the movie Mannequin? Absolutely not. It's oh. uh um it's one of the guys from uh Weekend at Bernie's. Huey Lewis. <laughs> Probably did the theme no. song. It was from that era. And uh, of course Zach Wiseman, my brother from another person who births people. Uh he keeps coming up with clever ones about that, and I just don't. Uh, of course, I like find the, I like yours better. Nah, all of the some nobody stuff that uh, he edits and puts together and interprets from the scrawled notes and unholy sigils that I carve into the walls of my cave. And Phil Better, uh, Phil Better's got a lot of stuff. You can find him on Invest in Yourself, the Digital Entrepreneur Podcast. Uh, he does a whole bunch of stuff. Michael, is there anything new he's put out that you really like? Um, yeah, he is. He just put out a new podcast. Uh, it's called Filet the Gray, A, eh? and it's about um, alien autopsies. Um, oh, cool. Which they do a lot in Canada. Mm -hmm. I hope that this one catches on, but... <laughs> uh, immediate returns. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like... Um... Yeah, he he wasn't very enthusiastic on that first episode, even though he was the one literally doing the alien autopsy. I would think that that oh, would yeah. I think that that would give you some, you know, motivation to to be really psyched about it. But he just wasn't. 
I haven't listened to that one, but I read the transcript and it just had a lot of squelch in. Oh, brackets. it's disgusting to listen to. It's like when you're like when you put a little bit too much milk in the macaroni and cheese. Oh yeah, horrible. It's horrifying. Yeah, I've been getting really in. So he did a novel because it's National Novel Writing Month, and Phil works really hard. So he put a novel out. It's, um, it's called Phil Better and the Philosopher's Alone. It's about a. I, I'm pretty sure it's based on something, but it's about a kid who lives under a stairwell. He gets a loan from a wizard and then buys the house his step parents live in and charges them rent. It's presented very heroically, which I didn't. Yeah, understand. he 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 makes a lot of money on the on the uh, interest, and he invests that into stocks. It's goddamn. How can you write five hundred thousand words in thirteen days and make it that boring? I'm just glad that we finally have some young adult fiction that doesn't demonize landlords. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> this has been the real boys. I'm Dylan. You can find me on all of the re- uh, all of the some nobody stuff. Michael, give your plugs. Damn right. Um, <laughs> I got. Uh, I love this terrible game, which is a video game show where we talk about video games. Um, Generation Clash, which is a music podcast where we talk about music. And then Jack Billings presents Haunted Apartment Complex, which is a scripted slash improv uh, comedy show about a haunted apartment complex that is home to the ghosts of um, old perverts and uh, butt stabbers. And there's also several wizards that live in the building and a couple of real life perverts. And uh yeah all sorts of weirdos like there's i think two people normal that live in the building but we don't talk to them very often because it's not very interesting yeah and of course you can follow me at vorpal words on everything if you follow my twitter i'm doing updates on my novel for november i am on track i'm actually a day ahead of my normal word count so i'm on track to complete this uh and who knows what i'll be doing with that in the future if only you had the work ethic of Phil Better, you would have had it done by now. It would have yeah. been published and it would have been making you money already. Listen, we already talked a few weeks ago about his show. I'm Phil Better than you and I know it. I don't need to be reminded of that. <laughs> cool. Uh, this has been The Real Boys. You can find us here every Monday. And I don't think on Fridays anymore. I think I think this is the the final special edition until the uh, season two starts up. Yeah, in, we're, uh, we're figuring February. out season two and... But we're we're really hammering down on those number ones. We got number one starting next week, which is very exciting. We're in the last stretch of this project, which is really yeah. interesting. The last eight official episodes, which are going to be starting on Monday with Chris Harvey's number one movie, Instant Family, with Mark Wahlberg, which I had never heard of before we started this show. I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah, it's aggressively fine. As so, Dylan so, would yeah. say, it's aggressively okay. fine. <laughs> so yeah, tune in on Mondays for the next few weeks while we finish our number ones. We'll be taking a break after that, reformulating a little bit for season two. But uh, until then, you can always hear us on whatever platform you're listening to us on right now. Yeah, whatever time you're listening to. Yeah. Uh, unless you downloaded it like onto a piece of hardware and then you're playing it without an archive, in which case this might be the only episode you have. Uh, that would be so weird. Um, uh, I'm, gonna... I'm imagining a post-apocalyptic scenario in that case. Okay. I mean, that's not far. That's not far from here, but hopefully the only episode that somebody has isn't a clockwork orange. That was way too early in this show's lifespan um, <laughs> for being as bad of a movie as it was. <laughs> I Yeah. All right. I'm not going to argue the point. <laughs> anyway, everybody uh, I've been Dylan. He's been Michael. That was Chris earlier. And uh, you know, you're, you're probably pretty cool. I don't know who you are. That's all I got. Bye. You're definitely cool. Bye. Drop, 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 drop these. Everybody, drop, 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 drop these. Everybody, drop, 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 drop these. Everybody, drop, 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 drop these. Everybody. Ah, he wants to go off road. Are you gonna shoot that shot when you get the land? No, he was right on my ass, man. But you wide open. Who wrote this? I did. Ask him if you got the letter. Did you get the letter? What letter? Make me quick. Make me quick. What's up, man? About to catch a fade, huh? Hello. My 
Drop, 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 drop,